All right, as far as in continuing what we've been talking about, <clears throat> oh, I've been thinking about just some of the experiences that I've had. We've had, uh, when I was coming through the 70s in high school, they had the Jesus Freaks. And it made me wonder where they got all their, they were passionate. It wasn't a chore. They were literally seeking you out because you needed what they had. And uh, they would meet and gather in circles at lunch and have Bible study and they were singing and they were, and it was a large group. I would almost say that there was a partial revival and I was at the place where I didn't want to hear it. So I would see them come in, I would literally run, or not run, but I would hide myself or get away from uh, their path because the message was, was, was biting me a little bit, you know, and, and uh, they were having signs and wonders. They, they were telling the whole school that, that they didn't have enough brownies that they were cooking. And they asked God and God multiplied them and doubled their, their yield. And, uh, you know, we would tease them you know, and, and uh, make fun of the miracles and things that they were sharing and expressing. And there were people on the streets. Um, a young man I remember named Charlie and he was already out of high school. And nobody wanted to come around this guy because he'd get you. And he was, um, he was kind of a, a cross between a hippie and uh, he got out of uh, the gang lifestyle. And so when he approached you, it was direct. And you need Jesus and he comes at you with it. And he would read your mail. The gifts of the Spirit would begin to flow. And he would <clears throat> just, and so many got converted during that time. So many received Jesus and, and, and he would go and invade pot parties and get everybody born again. And in, in realizing this, I, was, I started looking at history and I began to see some of the, the people in the hippie movement and, and uh, the anti-establishment crowd and how they, they started turning towards the Lord. And what they were seeking was an experience. They needed something that was different than what was given because so, many of, so much of it was rules, regulations, this is the way things are, this is the way they've always been, this is how we're going. And I believe a lot of the young people saw the, the fallacy in what was being presented because it was full of holes. There, it really wasn't um, a lifestyle that was brought about by righteousness. It was just a lot of rule keeping, especially in the church. And uh, so within the charismatic renewal, here comes the Jesus movement among our young people. And the difference, I believe, is that the Pentecostals and the Charismatics shared one thing in common is that they, they linked up with what we know as mysticism. It's a personal relationship with a living God that is active in you where you're, it's not so much a, a, a rules and regulations that you follow, but based on what you know in the Word, you can hear God speak to you. And He takes you into a place where uh, there are signs, what we know in the Bible is signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, that, that there are ecstatic prophecies, that there is a, a move of God that is available to us without going like the Gnostics who search for a deeper revelation, which is dangerous because you're piling revelation upon revelation which takes you away from the, the essence of what God's Word teaches. But in true revival, there are people that experience God because they, they come into an encounter with a living God. And, and most of the time their experience takes them towards Jesus Christ. And I say most of the time because a lot of people have experiences that, have, that, are, that they're as far away from God as East is from the West. But those that have a genuine encounter with, with, with the Father come through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And I think that this is what, if I'm looking at parallels, um, I was uh, thinking about a song that the Temptations did years ago and it was Cloud Nine. How that through the bad experiences that we're having here, uh, you know, to go, you know, your, your upbringing is not good. Maybe your, the house you're living in is everybody's living in there and stepping on each other. Uh, you get out to go find a job as a young man and there are no jobs. With or without an education, the jobs just aren't there. And so in this song, they escape and they're high. Uh, it's a euphoric high. Some people say it was drugs. Some people say, but it's the, the expression speaks about a euphoric high where you're always up and up and up and you're away from reality. And I think and it's an experience. And I think a lot of people today, 
they need a touch from God. They need to come to the face to face. They're looking for something. We have our president who came and offered everybody hope. And, and I'm not saying one thing bad or good about him. I'm just saying that the message that got him into office, which, which was hope. You know, we're bringing you hope. We're bringing you something better. And people thronged because here was the answer to all our woes. People are still searching today. And I believe that the body of Christ has the answer. I believe that we're on the precipice of a third awakening where God is about to release and move out of His Spirit. He pour out of His Spirit like it, He did in the book of Acts. And, and uh, we are in the last days. Peter preached the last days message. I think we're in the last days and God is still pouring out of His Spirit. But He's coming to people who are hungry. Who want something more. See, Abraham was looking to the skies for something more. He went beyond just what was there. He looked beyond the stars and God answered him. I think that there's people here today that want to look beyond what they have. Whether they're sitting in a church, whether they're sitting in front of their TV, whether they're sitting behind a desk in, in their offices, they're looking for something more. And as they begin to, church, to search, I believe that God has the answer through the church. As believers who are also hungry for His presence, hungry for a change, hungry for a move of God, I believe they can experience not just have come into an encounter with God, but come into an encounter that changes your life to the degree that you want to go out and do the things God said to do. And we have to begin to reevaluate our passions. Why are we here? It's not just so we can fill a church, but we want to bring the people in, grow them up and send them out. The growing them up and sending them out, I think, works in tandem together. And we grow into that which God wants us to do. But there has to be a passion. And there's so many people today working and doing things because they were told. Uh, doing and, and, and working things because they said this is how it is. And <clears throat> there's no satisfaction. But coming into contact with a real God that is alive, that's vibrant. The Bible says that the Word of God is living and active. The Bible said His words are spirit in their life. And a lot of times people aren't pursuing true life. And so what happens is that you're living in a death cycle where you're born to die. So grab all you can get now, because when you're old, you're going to go backwards, you're going to die. You see the people come up and they're a baby, they're, in, they're dependent, and they're, they're in need, then they live life. And on the other side of life is you're dependent and you're in need again. But I don't believe it has to be that way. I believe that vi life can be vibrant, especially in a revival culture. A revival, you sustain a revival culture through hunger, through wanting more. And what happens is we can't ever get to a place where we build walls around that which satisfies us. I think there's always more that we reach out to. And what I saw and experienced in those days were people, and now you, let me make, bring something out. A lot of people say, yeah, but the, these people ended up falling, they ended up doing this and they ended up doing that. And, and let me tell you, yes, they did fall. Yes, there were people with imperfections. But what the body of Christ did at that time, they abandoned them, let them swing by themselves. They let them just drop by themselves. They didn't rally around them, build them back up. And I think that's where we missed it last time. We need to rally around those who are called, those who have leadership abilities, and raise them back up. Bring about the correction, bring about that which is needed, and support them. Because we're always looking, we always want our politicians and preachers perfect, but that's not an accurate portrayal of what is out there. I think we need a little more transparency, we need to give people the opportunity to be honest, and let them be the domata, the gift that God has called them to be for the body and for the world. And I think if we come into this place, I think that there's, there'd be a shift that can occur in which as we hunger and search for His presence, we are the ones that possess the answer and can begin to give those who need, those who want, the answers they're searching for through Christ without presenting a religious mask, without presenting the list of do's and don'ts, but coming in with a vibrant, living Savior, Jesus Christ.